Hey friends! Welcome to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, I'm Jenna. I love to crochet plushies. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. For today's video, we are going to be talking about all of my essentials. So this includes all of my crochet supplies, my business supplies, my content creation supplies, all of that good stuff. I get a lot of questions about this, so I thought it would be good to just put everything all into one video for you guys. So with that, let's get into today's video. So the first section that we'll be talking about is all of my crochet business supplies and I wrote everything down on my phone so I will be referring to it throughout this video okay so starting with number one the first key business supply that I want to talk about is my website so for the longest time I've been just selling strictly on Etsy but just recently I launched my very own website through Shopify so regardless what kind of business you're running or what kind of items you're selling I think the number one thing to think about when starting your own business is how are you going to sell to your customers as a small business owner Owner, your website is how you actually connect with your customers and sell them your products and then aside from the website itself you will also need a special web address called a domain name this is ultimately how your customers will find your store since it will be included in all of your branding and is literally the thing that people will search to find your store think of it as your online address it's your unique identifier in the vast landscape of the internet picking the best domain name can definitely be overwhelming so let's not try to reinvent the wheel let's take a look at what other big wigs are using using and follow their lead. Music icon Shakira is rocking www.shakira.store. Mr. Beast ditched the usual .com for a .store domain. And even Michelle Obama is using a .store domain. It makes you wonder why all these celebrities are using a .store domain, but it honestly makes sense. A .store domain name will definitely help set you apart from your competitors and it'll give your store a little extra sparkle. Also, your customers will know right away that your website is an online store with the dot store domain it's like having a bright neon open sign right outside of your storefront but okay here's where it gets really juicy with dot store you actually sell more a year-long study shows that websites with a dot store domain attract a whopping 87 percent more visitors i always say this but the key to getting more sales is to get more visibility with a dot store domain you actually get double the visibility on google which means more eyes on your products which means more chances of getting a sale dot store even helps you save 12% on the cost of conversion if you're running ads to your store. And aside from all these amazing statistics, let's talk about the potential savings that you can get. When you first launch your business, money is tight and .store definitely understands that. They've started a program called Elevate.store to help all online sellers with amazing deals and discounts. So when you opt for a .store domain, you're not only getting a shiny new web address, but you're actually unlocking access to exclusive discounts up to $2,500 on essential e-commerce tools many of which I mentioned later in this video. Wix, Visaprint, Mailchimp are just a few and there's so many more. So here's the tea. For a limited time, you can snag your dot store domain for only 99 cents for the first year. I know, like, can you believe it? For less than $1, you can have the snazziest domain name for your website. Just use the code GENSTORE at checkout and you're all set to go. With a dot store domain, you can supercharge your success and set yourself on the path to financial freedom. Okay, so besides a website and a domain name for my business supplies, my next essential is... A thermal label printer. I said this in a few of my business videos, but this is the one piece of equipment that I wish I invested in so much sooner. A thermal label printer will save you so much time. It's way more efficient. It'll save you a bunch of money on ink and it's just so much more professional. I will link the two thermal label printers that I personally use. I got my first one off of Amazon and I honestly, I don't even know the brand. I think it's like IDRT, something like that. I'll link the specific one down below, but then I also recently got a new thermal label printer from Moonbin and that printer is Bluetooth so it is definitely nicer to have something that you don't have to hook up to your computer. It is a little bit more expensive though so if you don't want to invest a lot of money up front in a thermal label printer definitely recommend the one I got off Amazon. I think it was like $80 versus paying over $100 for a Bluetooth one. Oh my camera's dying hold on. And I actually didn't pack up my office yet so I can show you guys the exact label printer. So this is the wireless one from Moonbin 
and this is my OG one from Amazon. And as you can see, they're pretty small in size versus your traditional printer that takes up so much room. So if you're trying to get like a very space efficient piece of equipment, a thermal label printer will not eat up a bunch of your working space. Also, sorry about any background noise. We are in the middle of moving. So my husband's in the background just like packing up the house. Okay, next on the list is Canva. So any small business owner, I totally recommend using Canva to create like care cards, thank you cards, custom stickers, custom labeling, logos, like the list goes on and on. And I use the free version of Canva for the longest time, but just recently I invested in Canva Pro. I think it's like $14.99 a month and you might be able to get a student discount don't quote me on that, but I highly recommend Canva. Like the free version, the pro version, whatever you think is best for your needs. But personally, I use Canva probably every day. YouTube thumbnails, all of my Etsy listings, all of my photos on my website, my branding. And then let me show you guys a few products that I've designed on Canva. A lot of people don't know this, but you can print directly off of Canva. So say you design a thank you card and you wanna print that design, you don't have to go to like a third party printing site. You can order it directly on Canva and have it shipped to your house and the prices are honestly pretty affordable but okay let me show you guys so I designed these thank you cards that will go into every one of my orders and this is what it looks like and I designed these on Canva for free and I printed them off of Canva same thing with my care instructions and then for selling in person at markets I wanted to create my own little business card so I also went to Canva for that and this is what my business card looks like here it is on the back. And yeah, I ordered it directly off of Canva and I cannot say better things about this website. And see, this is actually the little box that it came in. Super cute. Okay, next on my essentials list for the business supplies section, I would have to say Sticker Mule. Since we're on the topic of branding and stickers and thank yous, Sticker Mule is a great website if you want more personalized stickers, branding, labels for your packages. So Sticker Mule is strictly just for printing. You can't really like design anything on the platform. So for example, these are the stickers that I got off of Sticker Mule and I designed this design in Canva, but then I went to Sticker Mule uploaded my design and got this roll of custom stickers and I like to put these stickers on the outside of each package so people will know that this package is coming from Crochet by Jenna. I think Canva offers similar stickers but the thing I like most about Sticker Mule is that they come in a roll like this whereas on Canva they come on a sheet and then with Sticker Mule there's like a ton of other products. You could get like the fancy packaging tape, custom poly mailers, the list goes on and on. So I definitely recommend Sticker Mule if you want more personalized branding for your packaging. Okay, next on the list are boxes. So I get a ton of questions from people asking where do I get all my packaging boxes? The answer is Amazon. Honestly, a majority of my business supplies comes from Amazon. So of course I will link everything down below for you guys, but I also have everything linked on my Amazon storefront. So I have a few different box sizes that I keep on hand at all times because they personally are the sizes that are most popular for me and for my crochet plushies. Let me grab them for you guys. Okay, so my two most popular sizes for boxes is this first one and they all come pre like folded. So all you have to do is really just assemble them and tape them together. But this is the six by four by three and this is perfect for miniature plushies. And then next we have this square box. This is a six by six by six box and it's also really nice for mini plushies or orders that contain multiple mini plushies. Okay, and next we have a 10 by eight by five box and this box size is really nice for just regular size plushies and then the last box size I actually don't have it on hand but it's for my jumbo plushies and that's a 12 by 10 by 8 box and maybe I'll like insert a picture here just so you guys can see how big it is. But those are my most popular and most used box sizes. When I first started my crochet business, I did mail everything out in poly mailers, but I've since switched over to just using boxes because with boxes, I feel more at peace knowing that my plushies will be protected during shipment. Whereas with poly mailers, they have more of a risk of getting beat up during shipment. And I just don't want my plushies to get like squished or deformed when my customer opens the package. I want them to look exactly how they looked when I first made them. So that's the main reason why I switched from poly mailers to boxes. Okay, and then the last thing on the crochet business 
essentials list, that's a mouthful, is Pirate Ship. So Pirate Ship is a third party shipping website. And typically if you sell on Etsy, you can get the shipping labels for your orders directly through Etsy and you can kind of determine what the cheapest rate will be. But with Pirate Ship, they also give you a ton of different options as well. So you can compare what shipping prices would look like across USPS, UPS, FedEx, etc. Whenever I want to get the cheapest rate, I do go and look on Pirate Ship first. Just because historically, I feel like I get the best deal on Pirate Ship. They offer like discounts up to 30% off and it is way cheaper than if you were to go in person and buy the shipping label at USPS or UPS in person. Okay, for section two, we will be talking about all of my crochet essentials. I'm really excited about this because I haven't talked to you guys about my crochet supplies since last year. So a few things have been updated. So let's dive into it. In terms of my favorite hooks, I am now a clover girly. When I first started crocheting, I definitely just got like the cheapest hooks off Amazon. I do recommend using metal hooks over plastic hooks just because metal hooks tend to glide better and not have as much friction and not as much squeak to them. When you use plastic crochet hooks, you get a lot of squeaking sometimes and it can drive you crazy. So yeah, in the beginning, I just used whatever hooks I could find off Amazon. I wasn't really loyal to a brand or anything, but fast forward two plus years of crocheting, I definitely have gravitated to only using clover hooks. And that's simply because I think ergonomically they feel the best to use personally. And I also love how durable they are. They don't get as messy and as like gross as the other cheaper crochet hooks. Like I noticed sometimes when using the cheaper crochet hooks, they get like sometimes like a buildup on them and it, it gets kind of gross. But clover hooks I never get that and then if you guys watched my previous vlogs I am obsessed with these resin glitter clover hooks and I actually buy these from a small business they aren't on Amazon or anything they are handmade hand dipped and I will link the shop down below it's called hooks and glitter okay so next on the list is yarn I feel like in the beginning I was definitely exclusively a velvet girl like I only used velvet yarn my signature look was velvet plushies but since then I've really become a premier yarns girly like I really only use premier yarns now and for my regular and mini size plushies I use Premier Parfait Chunky. Let me grab some. So this is Parfait Chunky and you guys have definitely seen me use this a ton if you watched my other videos. But yeah, this is a chenille yarn. It's size six and it works up so nicely. Like it's buttery soft to use. The plushies always turn out super cute and there are so many colors that you can choose from. Like this video is not sponsored by Premier. Like I genuinely love this brand. So I use Parfait Chunky for my regular size plushies and then for my jumbo plushies, I use Premier Parfait XL. So it's basically the same thing as this yarn, but it's a size seven, so it's a bit thicker. Let me go grab some. So here's Parfait XL. And the thing I love most about Premier is that it's super easy to get the same color in the different yarns that they offer. So for example, this is Teddy Bear in Parfait Chunky, but then this is also Teddy Bear in Parfait XL. Wait, actually I lied. It's not the same brown, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Like they offer the same color across the different types of yarns that they have so it makes it super easy to match colors if you want to size up your project oh and I just remembered people always ask me what hook size I like using with what yarn so for parfait chunky my go-to hook size is five millimeter I know sometimes people say five millimeter makes their stitches a little loose and they want to size down even more but me personally I have always used five millimeter with size six parfait chunky. I also yarn under versus yarning over. So that might also be a factor. I know people who yarn under typically have tighter stitches in general. So maybe that's why. And then with Parfait XL, I always use a nine millimeter hook. I feel like nine millimeter paired with Parfait XL gives the perfect jumbo size. As you can see up there, my unfinished dragon that I've had for like a month plus now, I use Parfait XL and a nine millimeter and she turned out so nice, so big. So those are my favorite pairings. So that covers my favorite chenille yarn. For velvet yarns, I'm still a huge fan of Bernat Velvet. I haven't used it in so long, but that is all I used in the beginning. 
beginning and I love that yarn so much. In terms of fluffy yarn, I really love Premier Little Bunny. Let me let me grab some and show you. So for example, this is Premier Little Bunny in lavender and look how fluffy that is. Like I love that. If you want a slightly less fluffy yarn that's a bit thinner, I also love Premier Pixie Dust. You can really create the cutest little miniature fluffy plushies from Pixie Dust. And I usually use a four millimeter hook with Pixie Dust. With Little Bunny, I use five millimeters still. I'm fighting the clock, we're losing daylight, so hopefully I can make it through this video. Okay, next on the list in terms of crochet essentials is my iPad mini. Here she is. I have all of my crochet patterns on here. Every pattern that I've ever bought, uploaded it to my iPad. All the patterns that I design are in my iPad. Back when I first started crocheting, I decided to invest in this iPad mini because I found it super hard to work off of my laptop. Like having the pattern on my laptop just wasn't as functional to me because I always crochet on the go. I crochet in different rooms. I'm constantly like moving around with my crochet. So having my laptop around at all times, it was just kind of hard. So having this iPad mini really came in clutch and I don't know what I would do without it. Like this is an essential for me. And I get a lot of questions asking about what app I use for storing the patterns so let me show you guys okay so I personally use notability so notability is basically a digital note-taking app but you are able to import PDF files so that's what makes it perfect for storing patterns and then as you can see I just have a bunch in here and then if you have an Apple pencil you can write directly on the pattern you can keep track of what round you're on and it just makes it so much easier okay guys I think I have to pause this video and resume filming tomorrow because because we are losing daylight and I just hate how the video looks with the overhead light on so I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Hello everybody, we are back. It is the next day. We have plenty of daylight, so let's jump back into the video. Okay, so the next thing on my list for crochet essentials would be safety eyes. I get my safety eyes all from Amazon. I will have it linked down below in my storefront, but let me go over the sizes that I typically use. So for all of my regular size plushies, I always use 12 millimeter safety eyes, and I specifically buy these from the seller on Amazon called U-Pins, and this is what they look like they usually come in a pack of 120 and this usually lasts me a pretty long time and then let me see if I have some out so this is the size of the 12 millimeter and this is honestly perfect for any regular size plushie this is my most used safety eye size for my mini plushies I typically do use 12 millimeter but if I do want to size down I usually use six millimeter eyes and then let me show you guys I have them in my little eye organizer right here. I get these off of Amazon too, and the same brand, U-Pins. Oh, so this is what six millimeter looks like. It's half the size of the 12 millimeter, and it is really nice to use for miniature plushies if you want that like smaller eye look. Okay, and then for my jumbo plushies, I always use 20 millimeter eyes. So this is what they look like. This is again from U-Pins on Amazon. And yeah, these are the perfect size for my like jumbo sunflower turtles, my jumbo turtles, anything jumbo. I love using 20 millimeter. Sometimes I will size up and use a 24 millimeter, but it all kind of depends on what look you want. I know some people like the bigger eye look, other people like the smaller eye look. So it's just personal preference. But the seller U-Pins, it will have like all the different sizes for you to choose from. So you can easily toggle between like 20 millimeter and 24 millimeter. And then for my human sized turtles, like my massive, massive big plushies, I use 30 millimeter eyes. And I also get these off of Amazon from the same seller. And they come in this like little box and they look like this. They're huge. This is the 30 millimeter. And I will only really use these for my human sized turtles. In terms of storage, I really don't organize my eyes like I probably should. I did get this organizer from Timu, but I think you can get a very similar one off of Amazon. And it is nice to store the smaller sized eyes. So these are all the smaller sizes. But for my 12 millimeter eyes, since I use them so frequently, I just put them in a little plastic bin like this so I can easily just grab them when I need them. And these little plastic bins are super cute. They come in like a pack of five and I use them so much and these are also from Amazon and I will have them linked okay next on the list is stuffing so stuffing is super important obviously when making crochet plushies because you will need to stuff your plushies and the brand that I love using is called polyfill you can get it at Walmart Joann's Michaels like 
pretty much any craft store. I always have the 20 pound box on hand just because I go through stuffing like water. I go through it so quickly. I think Walmart has the best deal on the 20 pound box. I think you can get it for around like 50 bucks, whereas Joann's and Michael's might be a little bit more expensive. I think the full price is usually $80, so definitely wait for a sale to roll around and you can probably snag it for around like 50. And then let me show you guys the box. Okay, I actually threw out the 20 pound box because we're in the middle of moving and we're trying to consolidate everything. But here's the 10 pound box. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Polyfill and it does come in different sizes. So if you don't want to commit to the 20 pounds, they do have the 10. They also have a five pound and then they have a lot of smaller sizes where you can just get like bags of stuffing if you don't want that much of it. Okay, next on the list of essentials for crochet, I will have to say these are my favorite pairs of scissors. I don't know the name of these exact scissors, but basically you just have to squeeze the center and it'll cut. And these are really nice to bring on the go. There's like a cover that goes over the blade portions. So it makes it super easy for you to bring with you, toss it in your bag. I feel like I've just always used this style scissor. I know they sell other like actual scissors for crochet, but I personally love this style the most. And you can get these in bulk on Amazon. I will list it down below. But yeah, I love these. They make cutting the yarn super easy. All right, next on the list are these plastic bins. I just showed you the miniature version, but they also come in these larger sizes and they're perfect for just storage. You can put some yarn in there and they look really cute and aesthetic. So these plastic bins are definitely on my essential list. They help me stay organized. I like to toss skeins in there or like work in progresses in there and it just looks really cute. Along the same lines, the next thing on my list are these wooden shelves. I am so happy I invested in these. Originally, I didn't have these in my office and I am so glad I got them because it just makes it super easy to organize all of your supplies. I have a little packing station down here where I have my printers. I have my thank you cards, my tape. I have my like freebie stickers. I have my scale, some poly mailers, tissue paper, etc. And some boxes, of course. And then I also have all my crochet books. And just, yeah, a lot of crochet materials are on these shelves. So I got these off of Amazon. I know Ikea has like very similar shelves, but there was no Ikea near me so I opted for these Amazon shelves and they are great and they were honestly pretty easy to put together I have a video on my channel that I filmed like a year ago at this point and I put these shelves together on that video so they were super easy to assemble and I have no complaints with these shelves I had them for over a year now and yeah I think I honestly want to get another set of them okay and the last thing on my crochet essential list relates to pattern design if you guys didn't already see the video I put out last week it's all about pattern design how to make your own crochet patterns so definitely check that out if you're interested in that topic but a question I get a lot is related to what software I use for writing the crochet pattern and I'm old school I love Google Docs all of my patterns are written on Google Docs I love that you can collaborate live with people you can easily download the patterns as a PDF versus a word file also I have the Google Docs app on my phone and my iPad so if I need to like edit on the go I can so that is what I use to write my crochet patterns I know a lot of people also use Canva if you want your patterns to look more aesthetic and cute, definitely recommend Canva. But okay, let's jump into the last section, which is all of my tech essentials. This is related more towards content creation, so YouTube, Instagram, all of that good stuff. So a question I get a lot is, what do I use to take all of my crochet photos? And the answer is just my iPhone. I have like the iPhone 13 Pro, I think. It does the job. Like I feel like you don't need a professional camera to take the crochet photos and post them on Instagram. Like your phone can definitely do the job. To get the best quality photos, I do recommend going outside to take your photos with like a grassy background. That helps make your crochet plushies like pop. And then also make sure you're taking the pictures during like good natural daylight. You have some sunlight in there. That's basically all I do. I just go out to my backyard, snap a few pictures and call it a day. But in terms of my YouTube channel and what I use to film my videos, at first I did use my iPhone to film all the videos and that was honestly fine a few months in though I wanted to get more serious so I invested in a camera I currently use the Canon EOS M200 I'll insert a picture here I would show you guys but I'm currently using it to film love this camera I feel like I was super overwhelmed thinking about what camera to pick but ultimately I chose this one because the reviews were really good it was like a, a vlogging content camera like it was meant for that it's super small and easy to carry 
carry around and it's not too fancy like I feel like a lot of those like fancy expensive cameras they're just too intimidating there's too many settings it's too complicated too complex with the Canon EOS M200 I hit film and that's it I don't have to edit any of the settings and also the price point was really fair like I didn't want to invest like over a thousand dollars into a camera so I feel like this is a great camera if you're just looking to kind of up your YouTube game, increase your video quality. But if you're just starting out, an iPhone is totally fine. In terms of editing my videos and my reels, I do use CapCut. It is an app that is available on both like your laptop, your phone, and I love it. It's also free. They have a pro version. I recently did switch over to pro just because you unlock a lot of cool features with pro, but the free version is honestly fine to use in the beginning. Like they include a ton of great features. So you don't need to necessarily invest in pro if you're just starting out or you want to give it a try. But yeah, I edit all of my YouTube videos with CapCut. I love how user friendly it is. I love how it comes with like preloaded like little stickers and effects and all these fun little things that add on to your video to really make it pop. Originally I was using Final Cut Pro but honestly I just didn't find it as user friendly as CapCut so I've switched over and only use CapCut now. With Reels I typically edit them directly on Instagram but if I'm trying to do like a more complex Reel where I have the captions or I need to put a bunch of text over it and a lot of like cutting and cropping I'll use CapCut and it's super simple to make a Reel on CapCut as well. I feel like a lot of people on TikTok use CapCut for all of their TikTok. Like it's a really great editing software. So in terms of of microphones I only use the microphone on my camera that is built into it another reason why I chose this camera and love this camera is because the mic is great and I feel like I don't need to have an additional mic or an external mic however I did invest in an external mic for my podcast if you guys didn't know I have a patreon and every month for my patrons I like to record a monthly podcast where I answer a bunch of questions from them and just give them some work and life updates and originally I was recording that podcast on my phone but I wanted to improve the audio quality because it wasn't like as crisp as I wanted it so I went ahead and invested in this Yeti blue mic this is what it looks like it looks very professional it's pretty heavy duty honestly but it is great you literally just hook this up to your computer I hit record and that's it if you really wanted to get fancy with it it comes with a bunch of effects so I could change how my voice sounds I could be like a robot I could be a news anchor it's really cool and fun to play around with I know a lot of people who like stream and everything too recommended this mic so that's why I ultimately went with it but it's been a few months now and I love it I definitely recommend this mic if you're looking for an external microphone for a podcast or just to improve your audio quality okay and the last thing on my content creation slash technology essentials list are some tripods so when you create content the most important thing honestly in my opinion is tripods because this is what will hold your camera steady for you to create your content so the first type of tripod I recommend is something that you can have on your desk or something that you can just like attach onto something for me I love doing crochet with me vlogs I love filming content at my desk so I invested in this gorilla tripod and as you can see like the legs are super bendable I can mount this onto whatever I need it can adjust the height and it makes it super easy to film also this swivels 360 degrees so you can get any angle you need and I got all of my tripods off Amazon so I will have them all linked for you guys but yeah I would say this is my most used tripod just because I tend to film a lot at my desk the next tripod I wanted to talk about is this neck tripod I recently got this and I showed this to you guys in a previous video but this allows you to go hands-free and this is a magnet so if you have a MagSafe phone case it will all just link in really easily the one thing I hate about tripods pods is like having to secure the camera to it and especially if you're trying to move around and use a few different tripods it just gets so tedious to like undo the camera and everything so I love that this is MagSafe and I showed you guys in my other video but basically you put this around your neck and then you can go hands-free so I like to use this if I'm trying to film me crocheting in real time I know those reels usually do really well people love watching crochet in real time so I would just put my phone here it locks in and then I would just crochet so that makes it really easy to film okay and the last tripod would be a tripod that you can expand and have sit on the floor so this is the one I got this is from Amazon and the most important feature that I want to call out is this top portion where you can spin it 360 degrees so you can get the camera angle exactly how you want it and this is from Amazon as well it's really durable and you can adjust 
the height of it by just clicking these buttons into place. So if I wanted it to be a little shorter, all I have to do is adjust the legs. And there you go. It's shorter now. And it can become even smaller. It's, it's honestly really compact. Let me show you guys. So this is the smallest height that it gets to. And yeah, it's honestly pretty small and compact, but then at the same time, it can expand really large. So that honestly makes it easy for storage. And yeah, it's super versatile. Love this tripod. Oh, and then I almost forgot. I also use this tripod. It's called a Canva lamp. And I love it because it's basically like one of those architecture lamps where you can expand it. You can change the tilt, the angle. It can bend in all sorts of ways for what you would need it to do. And then they have this little phone mount so you can attach your phone here and get those like overhead shots. Kind of like with the neck tripod, but I typically use my Canva lamp if I'm filming tutorials. I'll put it down like this and I'll be able to film my tutorials really easily. And then I really love how this lamp has a built-in ring light. So that ensures that your video is getting the right lighting. But yeah, I love my Canva lamp. It can also swivel like this. So when I was first starting my YouTube channel, I would film on my iPhone and I would just prop my iPhone up here and I would film like this. <laughs> it's super, super versatile. I love this thing. And it comes with both like a regular desk stand or you could clamp it onto your desk like I have it here. And yeah, super, super nice. But all right, I think that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you loved learning about all of my essentials. And I hopefully this helps you guys out if you're looking to get into the crochet and content creator space. But with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye!